So this is January's $250 gaming PC, which consists of basically just an upgraded Dell Optiplex, so it was really easy to do. So without further ado, let's go ahead, get into the parts, specs, build process, and benchmarks. Let's do this. Okay, for starters, we obviously have the Dell Optiplex. It's the Dell Optiplex 390. It comes with an i5-2400, 6 gigabytes of RAM, and that's basically it, other than, other than like the other components, but we're not really going to be using most of the other components. Um, we're going to be transferring the motherboard, CPU, RAM, and also the hard drive. It came with a 1 terabyte hard drive, so that's pretty good. Picked up the PC for a total of about $60, so we're, we're already like a fourth of our budget in. So I had to get a couple other things such as like the case, which I got the Cooler Master, MasterBox, Q300L, which was $44.99, and we also have this 240GB A Data SSD, you've seen this in like almost every budget build that I've done recently. Um, it's a great, great SSD for the money, it's about $25, you know, it's not going to break the bank, but it's also going to give you enough SSD performance and storage to company with the like one terabyte hard drive like in this build have a pretty good combo. So the RAM capacity was a little bit small. We only had two free slots on the motherboard, but it, it was a four by two. So I took away the two gigabyte stick and replaced it with an eight gigabyte stick we got on Amazon for about $27. Um, this was kind of like a last minute decision, which is why it's not cheaper, which I would have like easily purchase this on eBay for like half the price but so this brought our total up to 12 gigabytes of RAM next we also need a power supply to you know power the entire build so EVGA midweek madness saved me there when I paid 27 I think it was $28 for an EVGA 600 watt 80 plus power supply which really good power supply especially for being that cheap you're not gonna find any Thing more quality for a cheaper price especially on any other site like eBay or Amazon EVGA midweek minus is where to go it's great <laughs> now I was also gonna buy a graphics card for EVGA midweek madness which typically they'll have like GTX 960 970s for like 30 to 40 dollars 980s for like 50 so I was hoping to get my hands on something but because of the whole GPU my or GPU scalper thing all GPUs are like high demand, so the, the second the site is on, it's gone. That sucked. But I did end up getting a GTX 960 for $60, which was double the price of what I've paid in the past. Which sucked, but hey, graphics hard, graphics hard. Even though this one's a 2GB model and not the 4GB model, yet I paid double the price. So kind of sucks on me <laughs> finally I got like this RGB strip and 120 millimeter RGB fan to kind of spice up the build give it a little bit more color in it and that brought our total to around $240 so nice so the build process was easy but it was hard in some ways um, for example transporting like the motherboard into a new case was really easy um, it already was in like a micro ATX form factors so it wasn't like some weird you know proprietary form factor that i wouldn't have been able to put the motherboard in a regular case it was fine no proprietary power supply connectors so i was able to use a regular power supply easy i went ahead and installed the power supply but the screws were kind of weird because like the power supply went like it was sort of placed inwards it, it's something weird with the case bracket for the power supply i don't really like it but it works it's fine it kind of like i guess indents the power supply inwards to like i don't know secure it i, I, I don't know the point of that it was stupid so i started screwing in the motherboard you know getting all my cables in cable managing and it turns out um i needed an adapter because the case had a usb3 port and the motherboard only supported it up to usb2 so i went ahead bought this extra little like adapter that transplants a USB 3 cable to a USB 2 connector, which it worked. Um, I've had to use these in the past before for like older systems, which funnily enough, the last time I remember genuinely using one of those was 
on an i5-2400 build. One thing that was really hard was the front panel connectors. Um, every time, I wanted to have like as little errors as possible. I didn't want to have to press F1 the second my computer turned on or anything like that. So, I did something kind of janky. Um, <laughs> I cut off the front panel connectors from the Dell Optiplex, took the power button from the case, the new case, put it in the pins after bending the pins that way I could fit the front panel connector on it too without it interfering with the power button. So very ghetto method, but it, it makes the computer turn on. Turning it off is a different story. <laughs> Finally, the only thing we had left to do was install a GPU. So that was easy. It was it's kind of a bigger-ish GPU, but it's fine. Um, went ahead, did a little bit more cable managing at the back, put the side panels back on and I was finished. Except for the fact that I forgot to install the RGB fan. But finished build, you know, is fine. It looks good. And now it's time to see how it performs. So to get an idea of the CPU, we did a test with Cinebench R20, which we got a score of 1151, which for like a computer and like R20, I'd say anything over a thousand is like good for budget gaming. Um, when you get like lower than a thousand, it starts to get like trashy and not really perform as well. So we're going to start this off with Fortnite. Fortnite medium settings, we have a low of 63, an average of 158, and a max of 208. Next up, we have Rocket League 1080p max settings. We have a minimum of 151, an average of 178, and a max of 215. So far, so good with this computer. It's actually performing better than I expected, especially with the 2GB graphics card and the older i5. I think it's doing pretty good. Next up, we have Minecraft 1080p max settings. We have an average of 160, lows of 108, and maxes of 395. Minecraft is actually really easy to run, especially because you know we use Optifine in our testing, which most Minecraft players use Optifine because it actually increases performance. So Minecraft ran pretty good, and especially for this, for who this PC is for, they play a lot of Minecraft, so. Def definitely good for them. Our next game is CSGO at 1080p max settings where we have an average of 163, a low of 99, and a maximum of 323. The final game we have for today was Call of Duty Warzone, which I already knew wasn't going to really be able to perform on the system, but at 1080p low settings we did get an average of 61 FPS, a low of 32, and a max of 85, which I'd say hey that's actually pretty good. Further benchmarks we have stuff like 3D Mark Times by Extreme, where we got an average of 1934, a GPU score of 1828, and a CPU score of 2866. The final thing that I tested was a 10 minute render of Adobe Premiere Pro, where we have an export time of 14 minutes and 18 seconds with typical, like, okay color grading and a bunch of effects applied, so it's actually pretty good timing. So yeah, this PC performs really good. The only thing it really struggles in is stuff like, you know, Call of Duty Warzone, which was kind of expected considering a lot of these parts are kind of old, like a second generation i5 and a GTX 960. It, that's around like five, maybe six years of like PC generations. But I will say it's still holding up for what it is in 2021 now. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you guys did enjoy the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you guys want to see more videos on the channel. I'm posting twice a week now, so be sure to check all that out. And yeah, I think that's about it. If you like the video and audio quality, go ahead and leave a comment down below, let me know, and I'll see you next time.